Hello, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, the one and only Charlie Brown. That's me. I'm the, I'm the one and only Charlie Brown. Yes. Um. <clears throat> anyway, it's Halloween time, and by Halloween I mean it's the month of October. Month of October is also my mom's birthday. Month of October is also Halloween. Month of October is also the time we go out and we do pumpkin spice and pumpkin lattes and lattes. It's a latte, latte, latte. Yeah, that's what it is. Anyway. So, I decided to do the same thing that I did last year because I left you guys wanting more of me. So, I'm going to give it to you. Me. Anyway, since it's Halloween, I decided to watch uh, a couple movies this year. A couple Halloween movies. And, um, well, movies that I like to watch during Halloween. And there's a lot of movies that I like to switch through my rotation. But this year, the first movie itself is the movie Queen of the Damned. You guys remember that movie, Queen Did Them? All right, the reason why I says that on there is because I have to take it back to the library. Funny story. For some strange reason, I can't find my copy of this. So I went and ordered it, and then it got back ordered, and then they said that they need more time to send it, and then they gave me my money back, and then I tried to buy it again, and then it didn't come. So this is actually one of my top 10 favorite movies, actually, to be... Exact. Um, <clears throat> the reason why it's one of my top 10 favorite movies is because uh, at that time period, I was really into, I was extremely into rock music and I was extremely into vampires. And uh, now a lot of people were like, well, why would they be like your top 10 you know, movies? I'm not saying it's one of the greatest movies ever made. What I'm saying is it's one of my favorite movies, one of my top 10 favorite movies. Now, for example, <clears throat> if you check out the movie and you watch it, it has Aaliyah in there. It has uh, Stuart Tomlinson in there. And the one thing that really stands out... Let me open this up so you guys can see what I'm talking about. So, for example, if you just go through this, the, the scene index itself, it will tell you the songs that go with each scene. Oh, cool, right? And you know what makes that so cool? And why so cool? I'm going to tell you why. Because someone like Chester Bennington. Chester Bennington from Linkin Park, he did a song with them but the songs were actually all written by Jonathan Davis and uh, the composer for, for the movie as well. <clears throat> Jonathan Davis, uh, the, the the lead vocalist in the, the band called Korn. Again, amazing band. Uh, Korn has, has been on my radar for a long time and they still are. Jonathan Davis is one of those rock artists where it's like you just it's his voice that pulls you in. And the writing as well too, but really his voice stands out. And and I've noticed what with the movie, the artists that they use to help with the music in this movie, those artists, their voices when it comes to rock or it comes to music in general, their vocals stand out. There's no one that sounds like Chester Bennington. There's not. There's no one that sounds like the lead singer from the band Disturbed. There's not. There's no one that sounds like Jonathan Davis. There's not. There's people that mimic them, but there's no one that sounds like them. Marilyn Manson does a song on here, too. When I hear Marilyn Manson, I don't really care for Marilyn Manson. But when I hear him, I'm like, oh, yeah, that's Marilyn Manson. <clears throat> that's kind of how it is. Even the um, uh, Static Wayne, Wayne Static uh, from, from you know Static X, when, when he, he passed away, and bless his heart, same thing with the late great. Um, Chester Bennison, they're no longer with us. But um, Static Ed, when I hear his voice, I distinctly know that's him performing the song. And what makes it so cool is like they're kind of like layered the, the song where it's like their vocals, and then it's like they they do this weird thing where they want the 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 the, the character to sound like he's from like the what was it, like the 16th century, I, I believe. But they want his character to sound like that and the lyrics to, to match that. And his vocals, the way they layer the vocals, it's like, it's like you can tell there's two different people singing. As well as, if you listen closely when you're watching the movie, you can tell that you can hear a little bit of uh, Stuart Townsend as well, too. When, uh, when, he, when, when he's singing as the character. Now, let me tell you guys a little bit about the movie. I don't really want to ruin the movie for you. But then again, I can't. Who hasn't seen this movie? Anyway, the vampire Lestat, uh, he wakes up and he, he's waking up to the great sounds of rock music. 
He introduces himself to the band, literally as the vampire Lestat. They're like, okay, this is kind of weird. He's like, I'm going to give you guys everything you want. And <clears throat> at that same token, you're going to help me. They don't really know what they're helping him with, but whatever. So as the movie goes along, um, he's basically, the, ba the storyline is basically him revealing himself to the world. When he was told that's a no-no, you're not supposed to do that. You're not supposed to reveal yourself to everyone. You know, you're a vampire. You know, if you wake up, go to sleep at daytime, they find out where you at, they're going to come in there and kill you. Oh, you know, that's them putting a stake through his heart. Anyway, so with that being said, with that being said, so um, after that, he gets real cocky because basically he has this yearning for more. And not only does he want more, he needs more. Like, it's a, again, it's a yearning. And as his character is going through the movie, he really gives no abs at all. If he had a bag full of abs, he threw them away a long time ago. And so he has no abs to give. So, um, the vampire that actually made him was actually looking after the actual queen of the damn, the actual queen of the vampires. And that's so happened to be played by Aaliyah. So her character is, lower, is, is, is drawn to him. He's drawn to her. And she, she wants to basically mate with him like a queen would. You know, she needs a king, so she's going to mate with him. That's her new lover. So she needs him, and she wants to go back out there and be as powerful as she was before. And the story drives you through to that. But really, again, the music drives the story um, to me. Uh, because there's another character in the movie who, who has a connection to some, someone, another, to someone else in the movie. I, like, I, I think I could just ruin this. Okay, spoiler alert. Okay, so the one character has a connection to another vampire in the movie. Or no, another vampire in the movie, and that vampire helped raise her and took care of her to a certain point, and they made, they let her go back to the world to live in. That's basically it. So, but this vampire starts to re starts to find things out, and by the music and the things that he's putting the the certain lyrics that he's putting into the music, that's giving away things about certain vampires, that's giving away things about their world. Um, and she she's been studying in it all this time because basically she's uh, she's involved in with <clears throat> I'm sorry with a with a society of people who study you know the the, the dark side of the world you know the vampires and vampire and uh werewolves and everything else they study them you know they keep a close eye on them okay so she's a part of that group so so you know it's basically like like other you know vampire movies like uh like van helsing and stuff like that that goes around the humps and fire but the only difference is they just study them so she's being brought and drawn into that world because mainly because the society apparently didn't know that her of her connection to the world in the first place. Not to mention, she didn't know of her connection to that world, but she felt like it was something drawing her back. Now, there's things in this movie where I thought the the writing, to me, is kind of, the, the symbolism and the, the, the it's poetic with certain things. Um, there's one scene where she, where, where the girl, the woman, she meets the vampire list that, because she read the Vampire Lestat's diary that she got from a character named David. And I feel bad for the character David. The vampire that originally bit uh, bit uh, and turned uh, Lestat into a vampire in the first place, that vampire has been studied and followed and stuff by David. And David gives her, the uh, <clears throat> gives the woman the the diary of Lestat and she reads through and she 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 finds things out about the vampire Lestat and about um where basically where he hangs out at and she goes there and then that's when he runs into her and then after that she finds her way to try to get back to him so she tries to return to him the actual uh the diary that he had and upon returning the diary she's like you know because she has this journey for something else and she feels like she doesn't belong in the world of living. She does. She belongs with them for some strange reason. She doesn't know why though. So she's like, "Bite me, take me away from this." You know, this. He's like, "Do you trust me?" She's like, "Yes, I trust you." And he's like, "Well, I'm gonna take you somewhere." So he's being drawn to her because he actually feels 
like he, it's something there. There's something between there. Mainly because he didn't kill her brutally like he did all the rest of the chicks that he ever had loyal to his apartment. Anyway, so he then tells her, now I understand what he was saying to me. The man who turned me into a vampire. What he was saying to me this whole time. I'm looking at you and I'm in love with you because you're precious. Your life is short. You know, you get to experience things that I can't experience. You're experiencing things from the world of living. But she's like, no. Like she wants more than that. And he does, he's like, what? Why would you want to? You don't understand what I'm going through. You know? You don't understand the idea of living every day and not being able to be close to someone. You are truly alone because you are living every day and you need to feed on the living. They're, they're, they're your food. You need to feed on them. So, when it gets to this point, he has to show her, listen, this ain't cupcakes and heart. This is all this heartbreaks. It ain't no, it ain't cupcakes. I'm trying to tell you, baby girl, you don't want this world. And she's like, oh my God, I can't believe you just did that. Oh my God. He's like, yeah, no shit. Like, I'm a vampire. That's what I do. You don't want this, okay? Um, <clears throat> now, again, I'm not going to just throw everything at you about this movie, but there's another really cool scene there, like the, the concert scene where he's sitting up there and he can see other vampires out in the concert because the concert that he decides to have with his band is in Death Valley and, you know, out in the desert. So he's like, hey, come on out. You know, if you're a vampire, come out. Come out wherever you are. Chumps, I ain't afraid of y'all. Come do your thing. Where y'all at? Gang, gang, and all that other stuff. Um, I'm not in the game, by the way. I'm just saying that's, what, that's pretty much what he was doing in the movie. It was kind of like, hey, don't you want to, you, you mad at me for telling our secrets, but if you got something you want to say, I'm ready, gang, gang, you know, because, you know, the young kids say gang, gang nowadays, that's kind of what I was trying to get at, anyway, so, I'm rambling on, but, the concert, he's sitting there performing the music, and they're jumping on the stage, and he want to fight, and then, all of a sudden, some other vampires show up, and they help him fight, and they're back to back, and the other vampire is there, and he's like, man, I don't think we're going to make it out of here alive. He's like, I don't think we're going to make it out either. <sighs> oh, and they're stabbing them each other, and they're like, oh, come on, let's fight. All of a sudden, they all start bursting into flames, and it's like, what is going on? And it's like, oh, shit. Oh, shit. It's the queen of the damn. And she's like, yeah, I'm here. Which brings me to another point. Aaliyah does this thing where it's like she's not moving in the movie. It's like she's floating. It doesn't look like she takes a step at all. I don't know who wrote that into the movie. I don't know if she decided to do that. But to me, it's very memorable that when you see her character, she's the queen of the damn. It's like, oh, well, she's different than everybody else. Like she, when she talks to you, she don't look at you. She's looking through you to like your very, very soul. And since you're a vampire, you, you kind of don't have a soul. So just kind of looking through you into a little hollow place. Anyway, what I'm saying is she does this like walk thing where she's like, she just kind of is like moving, like she's just floating. Like, hey, I'm here. I'm here. Look at me. I'm here. Ooh, I'm here. I'm here. Look at me. Look at me. And I, I'm a little disappointed with the, with the way that her character goes in the movie because, <clears throat> uh, the movie's called Queen Did a Damn, and it's not a lot of focus on her character. The majority of the focus is on the vampire list that calling out other vampires. That's pretty much everything that you get. And then you don't hear about the Queen of the Damn really until you start to read, when they start to read the journal. And then it goes back to being about the vampire list that. But then they just talk about the connection between the vampire list that. And, um,. And Aaliyah's character, which is the actual Queen of the Dam. Um, <clears throat> it would have been cool for them to have had a spinoff. Where they explained everything. They showed what happened with the the Queen of the Dam. And used Aaliyah to do it. But sadly, Aaliyah passed away. And they actually had a dedication for her in this movie. And... <clears throat> Uh, you think about a lot of what ifs and uh, what could have been from her career 
just seeing her in this movie and what she brought to the table <clears throat> as that character. Uh, <clears throat> all in all, if you guys never had a chance to check out Queen of the Dam, uh, do what I did. Go to your library and rent it. If not, you know, uh, try to buy it from Amazon. It's kind of hard to try to get it. But if you, it, it, at this point, it's like a $5 bins. You know, go check it out. Grab it from Rod Island Bills. If Redbox is still around, go through Redbox to try to get it. Um, but it's a great movie for you guys to sit down and just go ahead and watch. And, you know, something that you can easily... As a matter of fact, I think it's PG-13. I don't think... Uh, no, it's Radar. It's Radar. It's Radar uh, for uh, Vampire Violence. It's Rated R for Vampire Violence. Seriously, look what it says on there. Rated R for Vampire Violence. Eh, whatever. So, <clears throat> you guys can actually sit down and check this out. And uh, as a good movie to watch for Halloween. And since Halloween just got started, this is only my first movie I want to talk to you guys about. I hope you guys join me. Hop in the car. I got room back there in the back seat. But when you get in, make sure you put on your seatbelt back there. Um, And I'm going to go ahead and put my seatbelt on. We started the car up, vroom, vroom, and we're going to keep driving along for this month of October. By the way, happy birthday, Ma. For this month of October, uh, it's not our birthday yet, but happy birthday, Ma. Um, for this month of October, and there's many more horror movies, Halloween movies. Let's just call them Halloween movies, because not all of them are just strictly like, rah, rah, movies. You know, some of them might just be, oh, some of them might be, uh-huh, some of them might be, you don't really know. But join me for this ride. Again, when you get in, put your seatbelt on. If you can pick up what I'm putting down around the town, Charlie Brown. Blah, 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 blah. Thank you guys so much for checking out this video. And guys, can you please do a solid for me? Hit that like button. Don't forget to subscribe and comment down below so I can know what you guys liked and disliked about this video. Okay. Also, 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 go check out Around the Town podcast now streaming over there on uh, what's that called? Spotify. That's right, Spotify. And don't forget to check out everywhere you see the word and the name Charlie Brown. Ta ta.